ಸರ್ವೋಪನಿಷದೋ ಗಾವೋ ದೋಗ್ಧಾಗೋಪಾಲನಂದನ ಪಾರ್ಥೋವತ್ಸ ಸುಧೀರ್ಭೋಕ್ತ ದುಗ್ಧ ಗೀತಾಮೃತ ಮಹತ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೂ ಸೆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ವಿ ಲರ್ನ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಇಶ್ಯೂಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ವಿಷಾದ್ his depression his frustration his anxiety attack and then we learned how to turn that vishad into vishad yog connecting our problems connecting our conflict to god the main topic of the shrimad bhagavad gita is going to be yog presented in different ways karma yog bhakti yog nan yog dhyan yog but the main topic is always going to be yog and yog means a firm refuge at god in god within god so as we go deeper into this again first we want to understand what arjun says to shri krishna bhagwan in chapter 2 shlok 7 arjun tells bhagwan karpanya dosho pahata swabhava pruchami tvam dharma samurda cheta yat shreyasya nischitam bruhitanme shishyas teham shadi mam tvam prapannam shrey we spoke briefly about the difference between shrey and pray once there was a child who had fallen sick and he went to the doctor the doctor told him that you're going to have to take a little bit of bitter medicine every day and only then will you get better you have to stop eating the chocolates as well now when he went home he continued his daily routine a week later he came back to the doctor and the doctor saw that he was still sick the doctor asked him which of your two parents do you prefer more and he said i like dad better and the doctor said why do you like dad better and the kid said dad gives me chocolate the doctor asked what does mom give you mom gives me bitter medicine dad and mom one was doing pray and one was doing shrey the child doesn't understand the difference but the doctor understands what's good for the child and what the child wants Arjuna is telling Krishna Bhagwan don't give me what i want give me what i need and Krishna Bhagwan gives him the Shrimad Bhagavad Gita when he says when Arjun says shishyas teham that's him taking sharanagati refuge of god if we are try to topic a little bit more let's look into the mahabharat and see how people have dedicated themselves to god if we take two examples from the mahabharat in detail one from the sabha chapter sabha parva of the mahabharat at this time shakuni duryodhan they had invited yudhishthir and the other pandavas to come and play a game of dice yudhishthir didn't ask god's permission but he went anyways and while playing dice in the ante one by one he lost everything he lost his kingdom he lost his brothers he lost himself and when he had nothing left he decided to put his wife in the ante He lost his wife Draupadi to Duryodhan and all of the other Kauravs. Duryodhan was so happy at this because from the moment he had laid eyes on Draupadi he wanted to marry her. And now she was his property. That's how he felt. Duryodhan looks at Vidur and he tells Vidur to go and bring Draupadi into this sabha, into this assembly. Vidur is a dharmatma. He's a very pious soul. And he tells Duryodhan that you should never talk about Draupadi in this way. You should never think of Draupadi in this way. Draupadi is an avatar of Lakshmi. Duryodhan says, "Look, this is what's going to happen in the forward program. So if you don't want to be here to see it, then you should leave." Vidur ji, he can't even stand there anymore. He gets up out of the assembly and leaves. Duryodhan looks to his brother Dushasan and tells Dushasan, "Can you go and bring Draupadi into this assembly?" Dushasan goes. He goes into Draupadi's room. Draupadi is menstruating at the time. She's alone. He grabs her by her hair. drags her into the assembly and in an assembly hall full of just men he throws her into the middle and at that time karna duryodhan dushasan they're all laughing karna from the audience he screams out look at your pitiful state had you married me years ago you wouldn't be in this situation but instead of me you chose these five losers and this is where you are dropadi can barely stand to hear it but dropadi gets onto her feet and she sees all of this situation and she feels that somebody has to come here to protect me who will protect me 
First, she looks to her husband, Yudhishthir. Yudhishthir, Rakshasva, save me. Yudhishthir looks down because he's lost. He's lost himself. Then she looks to Bhim. In Draupadi's life, whenever she's had any issues, she's known that Bhim is so strong, through his strength, he's always been there to protect me. She looks at Bhim, but even today, Bhim can do nothing. Bhim looks down. When Bhim looks down, Duryodhan is even more excited. Because Duryodhan and Bhim have always had this internal argument. If there was ever any enmity between anyone, Duryodhan especially hated Bhim. Seeing Bhim lose like this, unable to help, Duryodhan is so excited that he lifts one of his dhotyu legs, one of the sides of his pants. And he opens his thigh to Draupadi and says, in the end, you're going to be sitting here. Bhim can't even stand it. He gets up and he says, Chanchala Brahmita Bhuja Chanda Gada Bhigata. I take a vow here today that the day will come that I will break your thigh open, drain it of your blood, use your blood to wash Draupadi's hair. Everyone is shocked. <laughs> what type of a vow is this? There are two dramas in Sanskrit written on just this one vow, Urubhang and Verni Samharab. But at this moment, Bhim also says, this is my vow, but today, just today, because of this situation, I'm unable to do anything. Duryodhan stops laughing, but he puts his dhoti leg down, he puts the pant leg down, and then he continues. At that time, Draupadi looks at Arjun, Nakul, Sadev. She has five husbands. Five husbands, and not a single husband is able to help her at this time. She's so upset. She looks into the audience and she sees some of the seniors sitting there. There's a statement, Nasa Sabha Yatra Nasanti Vruddha. A true assembly is that in which the seniors are sitting. She looks up to Bhishma Pita. She looks up to Dhrutrasht. And she calls out to them, Why don't one of you come and save me? And Bhishma Pita looks at Draupadi and says, Arthasya Purusho Dahasaha. Every man is a slave to money. We live in Duryodhan's house. We eat his food. We know what's happening is wrong, but we can't do anything about it. Duryodhan is excited because now nobody can help Draupadi. He calls out to his brother Dushasan and says, strip Draupadi of her sari. Draupadi feels no one is here to help me. I'll help myself. She takes the sari in her hands. And now it's her versus Dushasan in a tug of war to keep her own clothes on. Dushasan pulls on her sari. And one side is just Draupadi and one side is Dushasan. And in just a joke and just like a play, Dushasan pulls Draupadi's sari out of her hands. And then she feels to herself, if not in my hands, I'll save myself through my teeth. Hatma ne to datma. And she takes the sari and she grabs it in her teeth. She's biting down as strong as he can, as hard as she can. And Dushasan, while laughing, pulls the sari from her teeth. And at that point, last, when every other support has failed, Draupadi calls out to Krishna Bhagwan. Hey Natha, hey Rama Natha, Vraja Natha Artha Nashana, Gaurava Arnava Magna Mam Udharasva Janardana, Hey Krishna Krishna Mahayogin, Vishwatman Vishwabhavana, Prapannam Pahi Govinda Guru Madhevasiyatim, Hey Krishna, Hey Krishna, Hey Janardan. I'm drowning in this ocean of the Kauravs. Save me, save me. And Krishna Bhagwan was just waiting. He was waiting for the call. And as Dushasan grabbed on Draupadi Sari and started pulling it, the scriptures explain that Krishna Bhagwan, through a miracle, kept adding saris to Draupadi's clothes. They say that Dushasan was able to pull 999 saris. And eventually, he was exhausted. He fell to the ground. Krishna Bhagwan personified into the audience. He manifested there. And Draupadi looks at Krishna Bhagwan after this miracle and she asks him a question. You saw all of this happening. Kim na janasi keshava. You saw all of this happening. What took you so long? Krishna Bhagwan replies, I didn't take long. You took too long. This is what happens with us. Whenever we have a problem in our life, the first thing we do is we look towards every other support we have. And the very last option is God. Pramukh Swami Maharaj had a gallbladder operation. And afterwards, while he was speaking with his doctor, he said, the nature of man is such that he will go to every extent to help himself. And when every other option fails, as a last option, he turns to God. 
Ramuk Swami Maharaj used to describe that we use God as a spare wheel. He's always there with us, ready whenever we need Him. But we never even remember Him until we're in a very difficult situation. We always pray to God when all of the other options fail. We never pray to God at the beginning to give us the intelligence to always find the best option from the beginning. This is the difference between us and God. In our lives, how do you know where you have your first priority? Where your refuge lies? When you have a problem in your life, the first thing that comes to your mind, you should understand that you have its ashray. You have the refuge of that thing. Let me give you an example. For example, if you have a difficult situation in your life, and if the first thought that comes into your mind is, if I had $10,000 in my bank account, then I will be able to get out of this situation, then you should understand that you have the refuge of money first, not God. Uh, alternatively, quite often, especially in Indian culture, there are people in everyone's family who are experts in certain things. Now, you may be living far from home, you may be on your own, and when a certain difficult circumstance arises, if you think to yourself, if I had my uncle or my aunt here with me right now, they would know the way to get out of this difficult situation. They would know who to call, what context to use. If that's your first thought, then understand that you have the ashray, the refuge of your family, but not God. I've been speaking for about 10 to 15 minutes now. And you may be listening to this and you've gone through two previous lectures and you might be thinking, Yogan and Swami just keeps talking about the same topic over and over and over again. I have a headache. And you want to shut this speech off and you want to go into your medicine cabinet and take out some paracetamol, some aspirin. If that's your first thought, then you should understand that you have the refuge of medicine, but not God. Because even medicine doesn't cure disease. It helps. But everyone who takes medicine, even the people who make medicine, everyone dies. Disease problems, depression, frustration, everything. In the end, the ultimate solution is God. And when you have God as your first refuge, as your number one priority, then you've reached the level of Arjun. Then you've actually reached Yog. If we take another prasang, another incident, Arjun, as I said, we're going to take two. On one side is Draupadi, who chose God, but as a last option. On the other side is Arjun. When the Mahabharata war was finalized, between the Kauravs and the Pandavs. Sri Krishna Bhagwan was in Dwarka. At that time, Duryodhan left his kingdom in, Ind in Hastinapur. Arjun left his kingdom in Indraprast. And they both went towards Dwarka in Gujarat to meet Krishna Bhagwan. Now at that time, Duryodhan arrived first. Krishna Bhagwan had had his lunch and had gone to have some afternoon rest. While Krishna Bhagwan was sleeping, Duryodhan entered into the room. He saw Bhagwan was asleep, so he put a chair next to Bhagwan's head and he sat there, waiting patiently for God to wake up. Arjun came a few moments later. He also saw that Krishna Bhagwan was asleep, so he sat at God's feet on a Krutanjali Bhutva with the hands folded. He just watched. He did darshan. He viewed God. When God woke up, the first person he saw was Arjun. And he asked Arjun, why are you here? And before Arjun could speak, Duryodhan spoke from the side. Duryodhan said, okay, God, we're both here for the same reason. The war is final. Don't talk to us about unity. Don't try to even talk to us about any compromise. The war is final. We are going to have this war. Now, Arjun and I are both here for the same reason. You have an army called the Narayani Sena. That army is equal to one Akshohini. One Akshohini is roughly 220,000 soldiers. Not just people, you have to include all of the horses, the elephants, chariots, all of their weapons, everything. You have a one Akshohini army. Both Arjun and the Pandavs and me and the Kauravs, we want to know today who you and your army are going to side on. You have to pick a side. And Krishna Bhagwan thinks to himself, now this is a bit of a dilemma. There's two of you and there's only one army. Krishna Bhagwan comes to a compromise. He says, look, I'm going to give both of you something. I want neither of you to leave empty-handed. So here are my two options. One option is the entire Narayani Sena, my army, one Akshohini, with all of its warriors, all of its army, all of its uh, instruments, all of its weapons. On the other side is just me, only me. And also, how will I be in the war? Nyasta Shastroham. I'm not going to take up any weapons. I'm just going to be a witness. These are the two options. And the first choice, what to choose, 
we'll give that option to Arjun. And whatever's left over, Duryodhan, you have to take and leave. Duryodhan says, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Okay, Krishna, you might be very smart in Rajniti, the ethics of how to run a kingdom, Dharmaniti, the ethics of morality. You might be very smart in all of these other ethics, but let me tell you Lokanidi, how the world works, the ethics of the world. In the world, it's a very simple principle, first come, first serve. That's how the world works. For example, if you come to the mandir one day and they're serving prasad to thousands of devotees, the rule is very simple, first come, first serve. And if there's nothing left for you at the very end, then you can have some peanuts. But first come, first serve, that's how the world works. God thinks about it for a moment, he says, that's true. But there's also this unspoken rule in the world that we always give the youngest child the first choice. And out of the three of us, Arjun is the youngest. So we're going to let Arjun choose. This is the choice. Duryodhan is worried. Because right now, in Duryodhan's mind, in his heart, he knows Arjun will take the army and I'll be left with this Lalji Murti. He's not going to do anything in the war. I'm just going to have to wake him up in the morning, do Arati and Thar, just offer him some fruits. Because he's not useful. He's already vowed to remain weaponless, completely useless in the war. And at that moment, at that moment, Arjun has to make a decision. If you ask someone where and when the Mahabharat war took place and how long it lasted, everyone will tell you that the Mahabharat war took place in Kurukshetra and the Mahabharat war lasted for 18 days. I'm here to tell you that the Mahabharat war took place in Dwarka and the Mahabharat war took place for exactly one minute. This decision, what to choose, this is the Mahabharat war. When on one side is everything, everything you can want in the world, and on the other side is just one God. What do you choose? At that time, Arjun, he won the Mahabharata war because he made the right choice. He chose God above everything else. And by doing that, he made sure that he was going to win the war. Years later, they asked Arjun that how are you able to defeat so many enemies? How many enemies could you possibly defeat if you had to in any battle? And Arjun says that it is my experience that I can defeat the entire world if they were against me. Imagine, if 8 billion people in the entire world were against you, 8 billion, every single person was against you. Arjun is confident, I can win against everyone else, but I only need one thing, Yadi Sahayavan Keshavaha. If Keshav is with me, if God is with me, then who can be against me? This faith, this complete faith, is what makes Arjun unique. Even before this incident in Dwarka, one time when the Pandavas were in the forest, after they had lost everything to the Kauravs, Krishna Bhagwan had gone to see them. And when Krishna Bhagwan went to see them, he went on his own, out of compassion. They didn't ask Krishna's permission before gambling and losing everything. But Krishna Bhagwan went to go see them. At that time, Draupadi is very upset and Draupadi begins to cry. Krishna Bhagwan tries to console her and Krishna Bhagwan says, Why are you crying? Draupadi says to Krishna Bhagwan, I had all of these dreams in my life that after marrying into the Pandav family, one day I would be queen and one day Yudhishthir would be king. I had all of these dreams and look at where we are right now. We're in the forest. We don't have a house to live in. We have to beg for food. This is our plight. I had this level of dreams and this is what my life is right now. And at that time, Krishna Bhagavan says to Draupadi, Satyam me prati janami, Raja Ragni Bhavishyati. I am taking a vow here. I promise you, I bless you. You and Yudhishthira will become queen and king. At that time, the Mahabharat describes, nobody says anything. They all took it as just condolence. Only Arjun. Out of everyone there, only Arjun spoke. He put his hand on Draupadi's shoulder and said, Chinta ma karu. Give up all of your doubts. We have God's blessing. It's done. At any difficult time in your life, when you go to your guru, you go to God for his blessings, and you get those blessings, to feel at that moment that your work is already done. Now all you have to do is put in some hard work to fill in the gap until you reach that goal, but the goal is fixed. That level of faith is what brings us to the level of Arjun. Remember, today, Next to Narayan, we see Nar, Arjun's Murti, his image. And the reason is, not because he's the best person in the world, but because he's the most faithful. Refuge in God is having faith in what God says, having faith in God's blessings, 
and having faith that when God is on my side, I can win against any difficult situation in my entire life. May we be able to imbibe this faith in our lives. And for that, I pray today. Astu.